Good morning and welcome to our online worship at St Paul's Thamesmead and a very special welcome to you if you're worshipping with us for the first time. Today in our readings we hear the parable of the wedding banquet in which a king sends out invitations to his chosen guests but they make excuses and decline the invitation. And this leads us to think about our response to God, the excuses we make to him, and what can happen if we are not careful or on our guard. So, as we gather today in the presence of God, let us begin our service in the normal way, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we begin with our first hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. confess our sins in penitence and faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I no, sorry, I needed to didn't do that. Sorry. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading, Isaiah 25, 1-9. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of rootless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the rootless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the rootless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this, are, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is taken from Philippians 4, verse 1 to 9. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Doria, and I urge Sintaichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of the co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep doing these, keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves. have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they make light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned down their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets, and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And they said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there were weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray that I may speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I guess we are all getting less of these days are invitations, and especially invitations to parties, except, of course, those on Zoom. And it is, I suspect, uh, going to be that way for some time to come. So wedding celebrations, significant birthdays, anniversaries, baby showers and the like, you name it. They will have to remain online or be on a very small scale. And let's face it, parties on a small scale are not the same, are they? But if you cast your mind back to the time when we did have proper parties and even weddings, remember them? It was pleasing, wasn't it, to receive an invitation. And unless there were exceptional circumstances, we would make every effort to attend, if at all possible. Not just for our own enjoyment, but out of our friendship and love for the host, whether it be as a family member or as a friend. But as we've heard, this was not so with the wedding banquet in our Gospel reading today. In the case of this banquet, the people who had been invited did not accept the invitation, even though it was from the King himself to the wedding of his own son. And the reasons that were given were not really good ones. Basically, the invited guests could not be bothered to come. So the king understandably flew into a rage and sent his servants out to bring in people from the streets instead, the good and the bad. 
Well, I'm sure we're all familiar with the parable and with its meaning too. We only need to substitute the word God for king to see that. And the banquet is not any royal banquet. It is the greatest banquet, the heavenly banquet, one that lasts forever. And now what was once just open to the few is now open to us all. We are all in receipt of God's invitation, the invitation won for us by his Son on the cross. Praise the Lord. Even then, though, we know that many will still not accept the invitation. In this country, the number of people claiming to be of no religion continues to increase year after year. And of those that do accept it, many fall away. It is as with the parable of the sower. It's only a small number in whom the seed will truly take root and grow to bear fruit. It is only a small number who will accept God's invitation and truly act on it. Which brings us to the man who arrives at the banquet without a wedding garment. Maybe that person is one of those in whom the seed did not bear good fruit, one who had not acted on his faith. Jesus says today, many are called, but few are chosen. But who does the choosing? Is it God or is it us? Well, for my part, I believe that it is us. We have to choose first whether or not to accept God's invitation. That is our starting point, and we cannot proceed further until we have done that. But once we have said yes to God, we cannot simply say, yes, I am saved, and then put our feet up. We have to choose whether and how to act on that decision, to act on our faith. And if we do nothing, when we arrive at the gates of heaven, well, God might just say, sorry, I do not know you, like he did to the man without a garment. And, well, I don't know what you think, but I suspect that most people that might apply to do not start off with the intention of not acting on their faith. We all start off with good intentions, but unless we are careful, it is easy for those good intentions to get swamped by other priorities, by our jobs, by our schoolwork, by our families, by all the demands of daily life. And I'm sure God understands that. But there are times too when our reasons are less justifiable, when, to be honest, we make excuses for ourselves because we just can't be bothered. And that may be because we become complacent in our relationship with God, or our love for God has waned, or even worse, worse our faith has dimmed. And all of these things don't tend to happen suddenly. They are gradual things. They creep on us unawares. We start praying less often. We go to church less often. And then we stop doing these things altogether. And once that happens, it is often too late. We join the millions of others who have said yes to God, or wanted to say yes, but then drifted away. And at this time of Covid, we, all of us, 
needing to be particularly on our guard, especially those of us not going to church. It's much easier not to bother worshipping on a Sunday now because no one will know if you've not turned up to online church. Except, of course, God does know. So if you think that might be happening to you, if you are slipping away, do be on your guard, because this is the way Satan works, whispering in our ears to say there is no need to do these things. No one will notice. The good news, though, is that God does not give up on us, even if it looks like we have given up on him. He continues to go out in search of his lost sheep. He keeps inviting us back into his fold, right up until the last minute. Just like in our reading today, when he sends his servants to tell the absent guests the food is on the table, ready to eat. So, if we know anyone, maybe someone in our family, or someone we know in church who we think is falling away in their relationship with God, let us be like one of the servants in our story today. Let us tell those people that God still loves them, still wants them at his table, still wants them at his heavenly banquet, if only they will turn back to him. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Let us pray. God from whom every gift derives, we gather here this morning to worship you today. We come to you in thanksgiving and praise to know that you are God and to place our lives anew into your perspective. Enlarge our vision with your word. Hold up before us the vision of your kingdom, a kingdom of justice and mercy, truth and compassion. Help us to grasp the meaning of the gospel which you have entrusted to us and give us grace to live by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray that we continue to lead our lives worthy of the calling to which we have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with each other in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we renew our resolve each day to become better people, let us hear your voice in the deepest reaches of our hearts. Give us rest in you. Help us to accept others, showing them your great love instead of casting judgment. We give you glory, honor, and praise for bringing us to the end of another week. Keep us committed to praying the scriptures over our lives in order to maintain your hand of grace on our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our congregation here at St. Paul's and the people in our community here in Thamesmead for continued peace, irrespective of the negative news we hear about innocent lives being lost and unnecessary stabbing and killings on our streets. We pray that you continue to protect us all from all danger and harm. We pray for families as we enter these cold winter months that you continue to provide for them and continue to guide and bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for your church throughout the world, for all involved in mission and outreach. We ask for your blessing on our church here at St. Paul's, for the Methodist and URC ministers, for our Archbishop, Bishop, 
our Reverend Patrick and Reverend Busy, that through their leadership and preaching, you continue to bless and guide them. Give them the wisdom to continue to lead us to you and to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for our Queen and the Royal Family, that you continue to bless her, replenish her with the grace of the Holy Spirit, and endure her plenteously with heavenly gifts and grant her health and wealth long to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and all leaders of other nations that at these peril times that you continue to direct them to make decisions which will be beneficial to all. We pray for those areas that have had an increase in those affected by this virus, that there will be a reduction in the spread and that people will continue to abide by the directions from the government. We also pray that the measures which have been put in place will help sustain and redress this situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for peace in war-torn countries of Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and safety for the people in the countries of Mexico and the states in the Gulf coastlines of America that have been ravaged by the powerful Hurricane Delta and in the west coast of America ravaged by bushfires. We pray for reconciliation throughout the world, for honoring of human rights. We pray for the homeless as we enter this cold weather period that you provide for them with shelter where they can be warm and be provided for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick and for those who suffer in mind, body, and soul, for those still suffering from the virus, for all in our hospitals, nursing homes, hospices in our parish, and for those who are housebound. May your healing hands strengthen them back to good health. We also continue to pray for our NHS staff, our carers and frontline workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, give rest to the departed and bring them with your saints to glory everlasting. Strengthen those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones at this time or remembering their loved ones that you give them the strength to bear the loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you for your word and its ability to, its ability to do what it talks about in our lives. We pray that as your children, we'll always be among the chosen few. We pray that we continue to stand firm in our faith and understand and on the third, to spread your righteousness around our communities. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the word that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
compared to this Knowing you, Jesus Knowing you, there is no greater thing You're my own, you're the best You're my joy, my righteousness and I love you, Lord. Now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you, and known as yours, to possess by faith what I could. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given. When we shall feast at that table where you reign, with all your saints forever. Amen. We now have our notices. All our online services and groups this week are as per normal, and you will receive regular updates via our WhatsApp news platform. We also continue with our weekly services in church on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. for those who wish to come. We continue to pray for all our university students that they will be safe amid the rising COVID levels. And we pray for all our children at school too, and those working in our hospitals and other frontline services. Just a reminder that the end of this month is the deadline for the submission of supplementary forms for applications to church secondary schools. If you are applying for a place in a church school, Please don't leave it to the last minute and get your form signed early. Thank you, as always, to all who have given financially this past week. It is hugely appreciated. I will put ways to donate on the screen at the end of the service 
and we also send them out on the news platform. The Lord be with you and also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we finish with our final song, Once Again. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life I'm in that place once again I'm in that place once again And once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at your saving grace. I'm full of praise once again I'm full of praise once again And once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my Once again I pour out my life